talking about plants and the pots you're putting them in. My name is Stephen and this is my channel, Hearts Delight Exports. This is a little tomato plant. I uh, planted a couple of varieties. It might be a tiny tim or it might be a seed that I, uh, that I saved from one of our store-bought tomatoes. This is a set of pots that I got from the Dollarama. I bought it mostly for the little greenhouse contraption that comes with it, but these come with it and there's a certain there's a certain idea going on here that you take these guys you plant small seeds into them they grow up they get nice and big and you take these and usually plant them in the garden but if you needed to you could take them drop them into a larger pot and they would grow well it's not exactly true is the problem I don't like that kind of thing. Now, this tomato plant was planted same time as this guy. Yeah. See, the problem is these little these little cardboard cutout uh, containers. They do break down. They are biodegradable. They are being truthful that way. The problem is for some plants it's not beneficial to do it that way so if you're new to gardening and you're you're looking at these things and saying oh this is great you better be careful because the truth is like this guy is set up this way so I took one of the, the little little pyramid guys here and I just dropped it into the larger container and I let it go and you could see what the difference is, right? This guy is shooting up and doing great. You look in, um, look in the bottom of that bottle, and if I don't have too much glare, you should be able to see the roots growing through this thing like mad. It's doing great. And that's where part of the issue lies. As the tomato plant grows, you can see a root coming out here. As the tomato plant grows, it, it will bunch out its roots and it'll follow the shape of the container. So it'll have a little cone shaped uh, root ball onto it. And when it runs out of space with that con in, within that container, it'll then start trying to push out. The damp cardboard is supposed to is supposed to give way to the roots, as you can see it did here. Uh, it forced the root out through the side. Let me see if I, yeah, it forced the root out through the side, looking for more soil, more nutrient to grow. But that's part of the problem in forcing it to wait to get big enough to consume all the nutrient in that pot, oftentimes there's not enough energy left to the plant. There's not enough energy left to the plant. These guys are all planted at the same time to be able to force its roots out through see this guy it's got roots coming out through it's doing okay or it had done okay but now now it's not getting enough moisture it's not getting enough nutrients and it's root bound root bound is bad you don't want your plants to become root bound for an extended period of time or just too much it means that they've you're, forcing, you're stunting their growth and in part that's what I was trying to do because I didn't want these plants to get too far along in their development before my growing season outside it warmed up enough that I could put them out in the greenhouse or put them out in the garden without fear of frost killing them. 
So I did this on purpose in hopes that it would stunt their growth just a little bit so that they, when they got to this point that they're actually able to force the roots out, they'd start taking off again. It should only have slowed them down. Now this guy, I seem to remember that I had one of those little, little pots on this guy too. And when I transplanted him up, he suddenly had five, ten times the amount of soil that he needed. And the plant is doing marvelous. And it's about where I wanted it for this point in the season. By May 24th, the fear of frost should be mostly done. So what am I supposed to do with these things? Like, this guy is toast. There's not much left there. So is that really the only problem with these little pots? Sadly, no. The other issue is, like, this guy was watered earlier in the afternoon, and the pot is now pretty pliable. This guy was, uh, one of the ones I transplanted up came out of these, and they're dried out again, and they're fairly hard. And that is the secret to one of the other complaints I have about these pots, is that they absorb the moisture. Now, if you're starting a seed into it and you're only letting the seed get to this point, and then you're putting it outside, that might not be an issue for you. Because once it gets outside, it gets a more, more even exposure to moisture, if there's moisture around the pot, there's moisture in the pot, the seedling is getting what it needs, and the pot is beginning to break down. So that part is fine, right? It might work for that, especially if the plant will develop vigorously enough and strong enough that it will shoot through the pot into the surrounding soil and give itself the boost that it needs to get, get strong and healthy. The problem is when you start them inside early to try to get a jump on the season, especially if you're like me with a shorter growing season than you would like, the pot wicks water away from the potting soil and away from the seedling. And before you argue that well, that's just holding on to water for the seedling for later, that's sadly not true. Uh, what I find happens is that the water gets pulled away from the soil and away from the seedling into these little cardboard pots and it then starts drying out. So it evaporates out of the pot and it's then out of the soil away from the seedling and it's, it's largely robbed the seedling of the chance it had to live and it will usually die. Here's another little guy, and he was also started in one of these little little flower pots. And you should be able to, to see it there. It's finding out where the camera is on my phone. So you can see there where he is. I pull him out, and the pot is soaking wet. This guy's not been doing very well because I've accidentally overwatered him a couple of times. So he's actually doing very poorly. But look at the shape of the root ball. The root ball is the shape of this container. And that's not so good. What we need is for the roots to start flaring out. He was, these plants were all been planted at the same time. They're all, they should all be res relatively close together on their development. So this little guy and this guy should be about the same place and they're not. So this little guy needs to get transplanted up into a better container Just like that, I've now transplanted up my 
nice little tomato. I give them a couple of taps here and there to help settle the soil. So, as you can tell, I like recycling things. I like making use of things that should go in the garbage. It actually really annoys me that cans like this are not locally recyclable. They end up in the landfill. So that's not so good to my mind. So lately, especially with the lockdown, I've been I've been trying to find ways to improve on some of this stuff. What can I make better use of? So I thought about it after I had done it, unfortunately, that I had bought these things. Why? Why did I need them? The truth is I didn't need them. They're they're good for some very small plants, possibly, but like I said, the cardboard wicks water away. It restricts root growth, so unless the plant gets fairly vigorous, a fairly big plant, it's not going to be able to break through the cardboard very easily. I've also made use of these on occasion from the dollar store. These are actually second year use. Why are these better? They have a hole in the bottom for drainage, so if you overwater, they will allow the water out. You need another container to catch that water, of course, but there's always some sort of complication. They won't absorb the water from your plants, and once the roots are grown through that drainage hole in the bottom, these are flexible enough plastic that you can give them a squeeze and pull the plant up out of it again. And they're bigger. They're bigger on diameter and they actually have more inner they have more inner surface area which helps the plant grow. They have, by the time they get root bound they're a bigger plant. That's an important thing. It's not a terrible thing to let your plant get root bound for a short time but generally you want that time to be as short as possible before they move up to the next size container or you move them out into your garden. You don't want them root bound for long periods of time. And just so you know, A&W's takeout stuff is all compostable, recyclable. So what do you need out of these three items? If you're having A&W takeout, you should be saving the cups for transplanting. And if you're in the dollar store and you see these guys, unless you need uh, the little greenhouse that they sometimes come with, or you actually think that this is going to work well for your plant, remember what I've said. Buy them if you think you can use them, but careful with them. This has been another video for Hearthsea Light Exports. My name is Steven. I hope you're getting ready to plant a garden, but I hope you have a good day. And I'll see you in my next video. Awesome. Oh, bye.